Welcome to Paradigm Medical Systems virtual demo. During these times, um, we're sad to not see you, and we know that um, things are really different right now, and we appreciate everything that you all are doing, um, and we wanted to provide you um, a virtual demonstration, so um, in case you are missing us as much as we are missing you, um, you can see what we have. So this is Sophie and Sophie's mom. Sophie is a full birth weight baby with a full internal metal skeletal system. Her limbs uh, articulate fully and she moves in, in any way that a real baby would. Any way that you could deliver a baby, you can do that with Sophie and her mom. Her mom is uh, molded over a replica of the internal bony pelvis. So the pelvic structure is there and the internal landmarks are there and correct. And the fit between the mom and the baby is very accurate and snug. Um, and it looks realistic and it feels realistic. So we'll start with just the basic spontaneous delivery and then we'll move on to breech and shoulder dystocia. Um, it's best to wear gloves because you're gonna get very luby. And we start with ample squirt a blue after the first application you won't need as much but as you're getting her set up you lubricate the inside of the mum and you rub the lube all over Sophie I may have used more than necessary but that sometimes happens um, and we get her lubed up now I just simply place the baby inside the mum I'm gonna hold her like this, and I'm gonna push down and out. There's a slight curve of caris in the model, but it shouldn't make it um, difficult at all for her to emerge. So at this point, you can do things at whatever speed that you want. You're able to stop and talk to your students or give directions or explain as you go. Um, you can slowly have the baby move down. You can have the student apply the pressure or control the delivery of the fetal head. Baby comes, and baby's head is delivered. With a tiny twist of my wrist, most of the restitution of the baby is done by the pelvic structure in the model. And then the baby is delivered. It's usually done with two practitioners. Um, one person is doing the pushing and controlling the motion of the baby, and the other practitioner is practicing the movements or demonstrating movements for the student. Um, one of the really nice things about SOAPI when two people are involved is that as you're getting to this point, then that student is able to, to practice that maneuver of getting that anterior shoulder and then up and out, controlling the I'm not a practitioner, I know that's not how you would hold the baby's neck. So for breech delivery, I fold the baby's legs kind of in a little crisscross and I insert her from behind. There's multiple ways that you would hold from behind when you're delivering. I either put my hand on her stomach with her legs already folded inside and push down that way or you can push from above as well. So I'll place her legs in a little crisscross and insert her. I don't worry about her arms at first. Once she's in position, I put them cross in front of her body unless I'm intentionally doing nuchal arms. So once I have her inserted, I use a bit of pressure on the base to give myself a little bit of leveraging and this table's a little bit wobbly. Um, but then I just basically give it a bit of muscle to the point where the rump is coming and now I'm not needing to exert much pressure. And then I'm just slowly letting her deliver. So, baby's legs are coming. And then at this point, if you're going to have a towel involved, you can do that. Um, you can also do maneuvers to retrieve the arm and then insert as well. And, and usually you have two people. <laughs> For shoulder dystocia, 
you place the baby inside the mum, and then you either use the task bar that comes with the model to screw it into the bum and pull back. I don't use it. I just dig my fingers into her hip bone. It's much easier for me, and it's easier for me to release and allow the delivery to continue. When Once I put her in, I pull back to give the um, turtle sign, and then I determine which way the baby is going to face, and then I'm also in control of the level of the dystocia, so I can put the arm straight along the side. Um, I usually start with it maybe like up a bit so that it's not quite as difficult um, and then move on to having it straight where they would need to follow the arm down and go ahead and do that bend and then sweep the arm up and over baby's face. So, since we never know we're having a shoulder dystocia, we're still practicing our same maneuvers. You can stretch the perineum or you can preserve or you can slow down fetal head. the baby is out, then I, I choose the shoulder dystocia direction that I'm going to go. And if I give baby's chin a poke, it'll give them that indicator or you can leave it straight down if you want them to have to assess that. And then they get the turtle sign. So at this point, they start their procedures. You, you know, we try McRoberts, McRoberts hasn't worked, we've identified the dystocia, we have the timing. You can do super pubic pressure on the model and it will work, so it can train for that. First, they would want to assess which way is baby facing, so which way are they going to direct their assistant to give the pressure. Okay, and then I'm assessing baby's face, so we're going to go super pubic this way. And then I'm going to reach in and try rotational maneuver, but that's not working. Go for the posterior arm. Mama, you're going to feel some pressure here. And now we're going to look at the other side. You can also use accessories that come with Sophie. This is her placenta, and just a little lube on that. And I can simulate a nuchal cord. And I can deliver the baby with the cord around her neck. Let's get her set up a little bit better. And then, as I'm pushing baby through, doing it the same way that I do for the regular delivery, and then when the student goes to assess for the cord, there is indeed a cord, which we then pull up over the arm. And now baby's ready to deliver. The delivery of the placenta is also option. We have a uterus that can be used to do a separate simulation where you invert this, put the placenta inside, and simulate a manual removal of the placenta. But for this, what I'm doing now, I'm just giving a little bit of traction to help that placenta deliver. And then usually you have someone helping so you're not pulling harder than you would in real life. And you can also deliver the placenta. We also have an option of um, a postpartum hemorrhage simulation through the model. So there is a placenta, or I mean, there is a uterus with tubing that attaches to this device, which is full of syn synthetic blood. And if you have a longer cord, you know, you can kind of hide it and hide behind something. Um, a lot of our customers do this with a simulated patient behind. So the patient is giving the landmarks and the signals to the student or to the learner as to what is, is transpiring. And the simulated partner is in control of, of the blood flow. And you can get up right behind this model and you can either put legs through and use those or just have no legs in the scenario and the patient is behind with a drape 
And so the person is the rest of the simulation and is, is, um, is running that. Oh, care and cleaning. She's easy to clean. This is water-based lubricant gel. And I wipe her down with the wet washcloth, get off the, the lube. Then I use a tiny bit of soap from whatever's in the bathroom at the trade show or Dawn at my kitchen sink and make sure all the lube is off. And then one final wipe down with a wet cloth. Um, during the time of COVID, we've discussed it with the manufacturer and he's run some tests and she's absolutely fine to be swabbed down with um, a mix of 70% isopropyl alcohol and 30% water, teeny bit of Dawn in there. Um, I do recommend after you're done with that, do the final wipe down just to make sure nothing is left on her. Um, but she's easy to disinfect, she's easy to take care of, she's portable. We roll her around in a rolling suitcase. Um, she weighs under 50 pounds with mom, baby, and placenta. She can be shared between practitioners so if it's your week to be teaching and you're doing it remotely you can do that and then it can go to someone else's house after it's been disinfected um, anyway it's very realistic looking you can stop in the middle of things and explain you can repeat things frequently um, and it's very realistic feeling if you're able to get back to the things that you do together